is Alina Guerrero Pena. I'm known as Ms. Pena. I'm the director of Gantt, and I am in charge of all things classical ballet. And so a little bit about ballet. Ballet be actually begins in the 15th century, um, around the Renaissance time, and all the different courts in France and, and Italy and are kind of competing to have these really elaborate plush parties. And so it starts at simple steps and eventually it would grow and become what it is today. Um, ballet actually made it to the United States through George Balanchine, a Russian dancer. And now all children from all walks of life. It is no longer uh, an elitist type of dance form, only for the wealthy. All children have access, um, especially in our magnet programs, to take dance and to take ballet. Hello, my name is Terrence Pride. TM Pride, Pride is what I go by. The history of dance is truly just the history of people, the history of culture, the, the upbringing, the evolution of people. My name is Elizabeth Johnson. I'm 15 years old and I'm in the ninth grade. I started dancing ballet specifically when I was about four years old. And for me, dance started becoming a passion when I was about eight years old. My name is Indy Hurley. I'm 16 years old and I started dance when I was three. And I really started becoming passionate about ballet when I was around 10 years old. Dance is a form of expression and I feel like I've done dance so long that it's just become a part of my life and a part of my routine. Dance to me would be like expressing yourself and your emotions through movement and just being able to use it as like an outlet. So even in ballet itself, there's many different styles that we learn. There's Chiquetti, Balanchine, more classical, um, and it's just different um, like preferences on how you do certain things with the arms and the legs and stuff like that. So although there's many different styles, um, the positions usually stay pretty consistent throughout. And so there's six different positions that we do. So this is first position. First position we use for plies, tendus, and the next position we have is second position. Second position isn't used as much, but we definitely use it a lot for plies. The next position we have is third position. Third position is a more open fifth position. We don't use it that much, but when we're younger, we're typically taught third position before fifth position because it helps us achieve a more open fifth. The next position we have is a fourth position. position. <clears throat> also, we don't usually use the fourth position that much, typically in plies, or it's like a connecting step in steps that we use in the center. And then this is the fifth position. Like she said, it's a closed third position. It also crosses more and typically hides the toe. And this is the most commonly used position that we use in ballet. And the last one is sixth position. Um, we barely ever use it. Some people don't even consider it a position, but to warm up in point shoes or anything like that, we usually do an exercise um, consisting of a sixth position. Sometimes it can be difficult to balance it, but um, ballet is usually after school, so I don't really have time for any clubs inside of school. So usually after school, I just do ballet and sometimes I have to do homework late at night. Ballet can definitely take a toll on your mental health, especially with being a teen. You typically want to hang out with your friends between schoolwork. It's definitely easy to get burnt out and drained.